Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. The Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Going to build a great border wall. <laughs> and who's going to pay for the wall? The Pentagon. Who's going to pay for the wall? The military. Who? Department of Defense. It'll be a great wall. Mexico is going to pay for the wall. Mexico is going to pay for the wall. Mexico will pay for the wall. And Mexico is going to pay for the wall, and they understand that. Mexico <laughs> is going to pay for the wall. Believe me. 100%. He's a jackass. He is a jackass, man. He's a he's a lion, uh, you know, mean-spirited, just a, just a mean. Everybody, uh, you know, they want to argue all over the, the Facebooks, and they want to argue in the chat rooms. They want to argue on, on this uh, platform and in the Twitters. They want to argue. Let me just tell you something. Here's a nice, quick answer for the people that want to argue with you about this man and his lack of character or this man and how they love him, and they're in a cult, and, uh, you know, uh, if they told... Uh, their daughters to marry him and be subservient. They would do it. They would do it because uh, they just love him. He's ordained by God, I tell you. Just tell them he's mean and he he lies. He's mean and he's dishonest. And and you know what? It's not just the dishonesty. It's the worthlessness of what he says. You can't put any value in anything he says. And what kind of a country are we when we can't put any value in anything that the president of the United States tells you is uh, going to be your reality or is going to happen? You know, so now now he's got this new idea about this stupid wall because he knows that the Cambridge, see, it all, it, it's all one big, nice, neat package. Cambridge Analytica did all this research on Americans. This is what Christopher uh, Wiley was telling you, that they were shocked. This defense contractor in London was was doing, uh, you know, uh, a psychological profiling of Americans and using it for elections here in the United States. And what they were finding was that there were, he, he said it was shocking that no mainstream candidate would ever say these things, but yet they were told to test these positions. And they found out people responded very positively to visuals of people climbing over walls and being stopped. And the whole racist immigration argument that Mexicans were murderers and that that they there was a a, a chunk of America, about 30 percent, like I told you, there'll always be that 30 percent of America that responded really favorably to that particular message that rapists uh, were Mexican and that they were drug dealers and that they were climbing over walls and that they were coming in like crazy. Uh, even though, you know, we had net zero immigration at that point, people still were responding to it. And so Trump went out there, and this is why he opened his campaign that day. Remember that day in Trump Tower? And the very first thing out of his mouth were Mexicans are rapists and drug dealers, and some of them, I guess, are nice people. Do you know, that's why it was all given to him by a British defense contractor who spun themselves off into a seemingly American company with the Mercer's money, and, uh, you know, incorporated the election arm of the defense contractor, the foreign defense contractor in the U.K., uh, in Delaware. They made a little company, a shell company, to present to uh, people if they ever got caught as being an American company. But they're not. They're not. And they were even warned. You know, it's so funny how the media finally catches up with us. Didn't I tell you, like, uh, well, I guess it was like last week or, or I mean, all the days blend together now, right? Uh, but didn't I tell you that uh, a guy named Lawrence Levy, I keep saying, I know him from high school. Hi, Larry, right? From Bracewell Giuliani. I don't really know him. I'm just saying he sounds like a guy I probably went to high school with because I, I went to school with, with Lawrence Levy, Larry Levy, all the Levy's. I know them all. You know, we all know each other. Just like the white supremacists think, it's true. We all know each other. <laughs> it's a joke, you freaks. All right, so uh, Lawrence Levy worked for Bracewell Giuliani, and, you know, Bracewell Giuliani was posing as some, uh, you know, security company for uh, 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 the protection of American data. Ha! 
Anyway, Larry Levy was working at Bracewell Giuliani, and Bracewell Giuliani obviously knew about this Cambridge Analytica plot and about the psychological profiling of American people and about using the data that was vacuumed up from Facebook apps without any audit by Facebook about your data being vacuumed up uh, as being somebody who took the psychological test to find out, you know, what's your personality color or what's your 60s song? Or what song are you in general? You know, all those stupid, which Sex in the City character are you? Are you a Samantha or are you a Carrie? <laughs> and idiots on the internet actually took that and, and they built uh, these psychological, pro now only about 300,000 people did it, but because they were vacuuming out your, well, it was your information that you gave this app, right? But they were also vacuuming out all your friends' information and your friends' friends' information. And therefore, you see how you could scale up real quick to 50 million American people uh, and psychological profiles. And the way that, the, that psychological profiles are built these days, I mean, good God, if you look at, uh, well, go look at the homework section today, because it, some of this should scare the bejesus out of you. There, you know, we decided that we were gonna find out, you know, how much data does Facebook really have about me, about Scotty. Uh, Brett's been busy, so he hasn't found his file yet. But they're on the website, in the articles about uh, Google knows everything about you, uh, there's a little link inside that article. You can get your data file now. You can actually get your data file and find out all the things that Google knows about you, all the things that uh, Facebook knows about you. I mean, Scotty did his, and they sent him a zip file. I mean, that's how big these freaking files is. How long did it take you to download it, 25 minutes? Yeah, it took about 25, minutes. Okay, check this long. out. You know how much data we deal in every single day? Audio is a big chunk of data. Just, just you know, if we only provided the audio portion of the show, that'd be a lot of data. But we provide video, too, now. And the data is so humongous, and yet we can up and download our data in, in seconds. In seconds. It took 25 minutes for that zip file on Scotty's entire folder about every single thing that Facebook and Google knew about. Let me tell you something, they know every email you've ever written. You Gmail people, you crack me up. You crack me up. Well, because everybody thinks Gmail is private and it's not, they, not only can they read your email, which they're not interested in doing per se, but they can actually mine it for information about where you shop or what you're talking about or what your interests are. They look for key words in your email. This is how you're getting advertising that is completely tailored to you. And it's not just ads about sneakers and it's not just ads about blouses and it's not just ads about the most comfortable bra ever created. That will actually stay up, you know, which is my issue because I am a 38 long, you see. Oh, go deal with it. So they can mine all your Gmail and they have all Scotty's emails. They have every email. They have every phone call he ever made, every text message he ever sent. They have every, I mean, this is just crazy. Every photo he ever posted in his life. This file is so freaking frightening, okay? It's so scary. And you know what's going to happen? I was reading an article today. I didn't include it in the homework. I'll find it again, and I'll post it for tomorrow. It should be like two days' worth of a uh, talk show because the article was written by uh, data scientists and philosophers and people who study uh, data and, and the effect of big data on our society and, in general, the world. You know, and, and, what, and you know what the conclusion was? It's very simple. The conclusion was that because of the fake news and the fact that fake news is responded to more often favorably than real news. This goes back to uh, that old movie Network. I love that movie about Howard Beale. I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore. Guess what they found out? When they started programming to angry people on the TV in Howard Beale's day in that movie written by Patty Chayefsky all those years ago, I think it was 1976, okay? And I didn't understand that movie until I was uh, in broadcasting. And I watched it again. I was like, oh, my God. All right? What they found out is you could read all the headlines, you know, like uh, Manafort had Russian intelligence ties during 2016 campaign. Prosecutors say bipartisan Senate duo calls on Trump to back off Mueller. 
Fact check. Has citizenship been a standard census question? Answers, no. Um, but, uh, you know, you, and, and I swear to God, if you put up there, Hillary Clinton ran child pedophilia ring out of Washington pizza place, that's going to get clicked on more than the real news. And what's going to happen to us? Is we well, it already has. This is why America is in tribal mode, meaning everybody's in their own camp. I mean, you've got fake news, you've got fake radio, you've got fake newspapers. The Washington Times is now being sued by uh, 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 the, uh what, what's his name, uh, Seth Rich's brother, Aaron Rich. Fox News is being sued by Seth Rich's brother, Aaron Rich, and the Rich family because of the the, the propaganda they spread about a kid who was murdered on the street in Washington, D.C. I mean, just the garbage that they spread and the, and the, 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 the conspiracy theories that they, they created out of this poor guy who was out at, you know, buying uh, something in a store and never came home. You know, they, they just went crazy on it. And, and people love the fake stuff. They love it more than they love the real stuff because the real stuff, you have to actually sit there, read, take in, think, analyze, and decide based on the facts you just took in how would you, A, process the problem, B, solve the problem, C, decide that the problem doesn't need fixing? Whatever your proclivity is, right? But you have to read the real facts. In order, well, people don't. And the conclusion of this frightening thing about big data is that we're going to get very tired very soon of yelling at each other. You know why? It's just not that satisfying. It's just not that satisfying. And we're going to literally turn on each other violently, which is why the Second Amendment freaks out there mangle that amendment while, and today, oh my God, guess what I found out? This is, this is a stunning thing. Oh my God, I, can't, I can hardly make myself form the words to tell you about this hideous statistic. 49% of Americans don't know what the Second Amendment is. They don't know what it is. They don't even know it has anything to do with guns. They don't know how it has anything to do with a militia. They don't know what a preservation of free. They don't know anything about it. Just like they, no one knows the third, right? Except for me. No one knows the third. Some people, you know, there are lawyers out there that can't tell you, you know, how many times the Constitution has been amended. 17. Just saying. But there are lawyers out there that don't know that. But these people who have definite opinions about the Second Amendment, giving them an individual right to own an Uzi, uh, they don't even know which amendment it is. And, and if you say the Second Amendment, they don't know what the Second Amendment says or is or what, what. Holy crap. So this is not going to end well for us unless we actually get serious about kicking down the road the fake stuff. Seriously. Getting rid of it legislating around it, legislating that if you're going to do fake stuff on the TV, you can't call yourself news, which I've been screaming about since 19, what, 99? You cannot sit on the TV and brand yourself news and pretend that you're news when really what you have are, are, are models wearing Christian Louboutin shoes as like candy. You know, it's like the little breadcrumbs in the, in the, it's leading you to, uh, you know, uh, uh, Hansel and Gretel's uh, cottage or whatever that story is. You know, I mean, you can't brand yourself. We have to have some standards. We have to have some practices. You cannot lie. I, I, I've had this one in my head for the longest time. If you are using your position, your official position as a government or a duly elected candidate, as a representative of people of a state, like if you're a House member or if you're a senator or if you're the president of the United States and you're standing behind the podium, okay, this, if you, not the campaign rallies, but if you're standing in the White House briefing room, if you're standing at the podium, if you're using the presidential seal and you're standing behind it and you are acting in your capacity as president of the United States, you're under oath. You're under oath. I have wanted that for the longest time. Because I got to tell you, this man, you know, with the wall thing, he was told what what 
performed well for the American, uh, you know, for his uh, portion of the electorate, what they were responding to. And he got, I mean, it wouldn't apply to the rallies, okay? So he could still say, you know, we're going to build a wall. Who's going to pay for it? Mexico. But as president, he can't continue the charade. Now the president thinks he's king. And we have a president who doesn't understand the Constitution or how money is allocated, that the president can't move money around. Only Congress can do that. And he wants to take the money that he just appropriated to the Pentagon, which was an awful big amount, and take claw that money back and pay for the wall. And he's saying that as president. Go to RandyRhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.